Welcome to Jackson Street United Methodist Church in downtown Lynchburg, Virginia. We encourage you to visit us at 901 Jackson Street and hear what thus says the Lord. The doors of the church are open physically and virtually. Please come fellowship with us. If you are looking for more ways to connect, network, and apply God's Word to your lives, visit our Facebook page and connect with Pastor Chandler via the Sunday and Beyond Facebook group. For your convenience, we are pleased to announce that you can donate, contribute, and tithe online through the Givelify app. Come, now is the time to worship Come just as you are. Let us take time to worship this morning. I am so glad you're here with us today. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship. God, we thank you for pulling us out of our comfort zone and placing us in a place where we were uncomfortable mm, until you showed up. And then when we realize, oh God, that you were there with us, that we were not alone, hallelujah, uh, worship broke out, praise broke out, Lord God, even in the midst of a pandemic. God, we thank you for that because you were able to keep us. God, we lift up those who suffered loss. We lift up those who, who, who struggled and had to go through uh, uh, even having COVID. But God, we're thankful that you were with us through it all. We know that you are able, oh God, because your word says, blessed are those who, who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Oh God, we were mourning our relationship with you. We were mourning our connection with you. We were mourning our time together as a congregation. But God, you showed us the way. You show you provided for us another way. And so God, we say this morning, thank you. And we say, God, in that way now where we are standing, where, where we are even communicating with each other, that, that, that you would have your way, Lord. Have your way in this worship. Speak to our heart through your word. Speak life. Show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Isn't God good? Yes, he is. He is so good. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And, and so we've been, we've been talking about God through, 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 through helping, healing, and hospitality. Getting a better understanding of how we should function uh, uh, as a church, as the church. As, as, as the ecclesia of God that, that has been set apart, that has been sanctified uh, to bring forth a particular message, a, a, a message that, that the heart and the soul needs to hear, a, a message that changes and transforms lives. Uh, as a church, that, that's what we, we're supposed to do. That's what God has called us to do. And by his Holy Spirit, that's what he has equipped us to do. But we got to have the right attitude. We, 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 we must understand what it means to, to communicate, to, to, to love uh, uh, unconditionally, to, 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 to have the, the heart of God in our ministry. Even when people hate us, even when people uh, reject us, even when people talk about us and lie on us, we must maintain this posture and this attitude and, and, and this approach that God has given us. Hmm. He's shown us the way through his son, Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, that was the perfect example. Uh, he didn't really hang out in the church, but he went to church. Amen, somebody. But his ministry was, was in the street. His ministry was among those who were sick. His ministry was among those who was possessed with demons. His ministry was among those who, who didn't even know him or, or probably didn't even care about who he was until he began to speak life, until he began to heal the sick, until he began to open the eyes of the blind, hallelujah somebody, until he began to raise the dead. Uh, they did not know who he was. They, they had no desire for him, just like the world today. 
Hallelujah, somebody. But, but God has called us to do more than just talk about him. He's called us to do more than to tell the stories about Jesus. But he's called us to be Christ. He's, he's called us to be his disciples. And, and we, too, have access to the same power, the power to deliver, the, the power, hallelujah, somebody, mm, 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 mm. the power to recognize the possibilities mm, in a world of impossibility. In situations and circumstances where it seems like we can't win. <laughs> There's no way we're going to make it through this. Hallelujah. You ever been there? I know I have. There's no way, hallelujah, somebody, that, that I can make it through this. And, 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 and then uh, I heard two words, hallelujah, that spoke out in my spirit. And, and these two words were, but God. Mm. But God. It had not been for the Lord on my side. I would not have made it. Uh, there would not be a possibility that I could make it. We come to a place where, where we understand that, that there's a need for, from time to time, confession. Yeah, we need to be able to confess. Uh, that is something that, 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 that is like a, a, a safety zone. It, it is like uh, 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 the key that's in this glass case is, is, is like the, the fire alarm that, that, that you pull. Hallelujah, somebody. It, it, when, 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 when we stumble and fall, the Bible declares that a good man falls seven times, but he gets up. He's, he has the ability to get up. Oh, if you've fallen in, if you're wallowing in that fallen state, uh, if you're wallowing in that thing that tripped you from the first place, uh, if you're caught up in that thing that, that, that has you beneath what God has called you to be, have you doing things outside of the will of God? Have you acting out because you need help? Hallelujah, somebody. All you need to do is confess. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, and I know uh, we, we struggle with the confession piece because we don't want people to really hear uh, what's going on within our hearts and our spirits or maybe even in our homes or in our lives and our relationships. Hallelujah. Uh, our little side things that we got going on that we think that don't nobody know about. Uh, 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 but, but one thing I came to tell you today that, that God knows about it. Uh, uh, he says everything done in the dark shall be brought unto the light. And uh, uh, I think it was even uh, uh, Solomon who said that, 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 that the conclusion of the matter is that everything that we've done, both good and evil, shall be judged by God. And so, so, so when you know that, you know, the enemy don't want you to understand that because what it does is it creates this guilt uh, uh, state. Uh, uh, we start walking around feeling guilty because we know we have not loved the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and our soul. We start feeling guilty because we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We've seen the possibilities. We understand that there's a destiny, but for some reason, we can't get there. For some reason, we can't do the things that God has equipped us and called us and prepared us to do. And, and so now, the enemy has us back in a corner. Hallelujah, somebody. And he wants us to think that if we tell anybody, if anybody knows, then, then we will discredit what we've done for God or we will discredit what God has called us to do. But I, I came to tell you today, if you feel like shouting in your living room, if you feel like shouting in your bedroom, if you feel like shouting in your car, uh, shout out the devil is a liar. He's a liar and he does not want you to understand. Hallelujah, that confession is good for the soul. Hallelujah, somebody. You got to tell somebody. And, and, and while you're telling, why don't you tell God? Why, why, why don't you start right there? Why don't you start with the one who called you, uh, with the one who chose you, with the one who equipped you, uh, with the one who filled you with his Holy Ghost? Tell him all about your troubles. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm, 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 mm. I, I believe there's a song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 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 the old folk used to sing. The, the old saints, I used to hear them singing, and, and I didn't understand, hallelujah, what it meant. Uh, hallelujah, until I've gotten a little older now. You know, you, you know, David used to say I was young, uh, but now I'm old. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, and I've yet to see the, the righteous forsaken or their seed. Hallelujah, somebody beg for bread. And, and so the enemy does not want you to have access to the possibilities of you making through your own possibilities or even making it to your destiny. He, he wants you to fail. He wants you to fall on your face. But I came to tell you today, victory is ours in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.
Glory to God. I, I, I promise you it just brings joy to understand that, that if you just have a little talk with Jesus, he can make it right. Yes, he can. Uh, but the saints used to say, sing this song that, 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 that I come to the garden alone uh, while the dude is still on the roses. Uh, we have to find our garden place. We, 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 we have to get up early in the morning. We, we have to get up before the enemy gets up. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, it might be at midnight. Hallelujah. It might be one o'clock in the morning, but, but, but we got to catch the enemy while he's sleeping and, and we have to tiptoe to our garden. Now, I don't know where your garden is. Maybe your garden is your closet in your house. Maybe, maybe there's a special room in your house. Maybe you need to go across the street. Maybe you need to sit in your car. Wherever your garden is, go to your garden. Hallelujah. When there's trouble, go to your garden when there's confusion. Go to your garden when the enemy comes against you. Go to your garden when your husband or your wife gets on your last nerve. Go to your garden when your children are acting a fool. Go to your garden and confess unto the Lord. Let him know, Lord, I, uh, I know you called me, but uh, I got this thing that's bothering me, this, this thing that won't leave me alone, this, this thing that just keeps pricking my side. Let him know, like Paul did, that, you know, God, if, if you would just remove this thing that torments me, if, if you just would remove this thing that, uh, that torments my flesh, if you just take this thing away from me, then, then I can better serve you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm so glad God is not like man. So you see, we worry, uh, we anticipate that, that oftentimes God is going to react or respond to our confession as if he's never seen it before, as if he's never heard it before, as if you're the only one who's going through this. Uh, but you're not alone. You're not the only one. This is not the first time. And uh, uh, let me let you know something real quick on the sidebar. Uh, it will not be your last. And so this thing of confession is something that we should practice. Uh, this thing of talking with God is something. Wait a minute. Talking with God. Confession. Uh, that's something like communication, isn't it? That, that's something like communicating with God. Uh, uh, so, so our prayer life needs to be strengthened. Mm. Uh, we need to spend more time on our knees than we do on the phone. Mm. We need to spend more time on our knees than we do at the mall. We need to spend more time on our knees. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, uh, there's an there's a, a, a R&B artist out there that has a song called My Confessions. Uh, he said he thought that he had told everything he could tell. <laughs> but then he got a phone call saying that my side piece got a child on the way. And he says, these are my confessions. And he's making million dollars or better from his confessions. In the world, uh, they talk about their wrong. They, they talk about their dirt. They, they, they talk about it. Some of them, some people wear them as if they're badges. Some of them wear them as if they're hats or flags or their colors. And they, they talk about them because they're not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. God wants us to know that we don't have to be ashamed. We, we don't have to be ashamed when we fall short. Hallelujah. In all of our righteousness, we are no more than filthy rags before our God, before the holiness of our God. And so we must find a way. We must urge ourselves and push ourselves to confess unto God the things that concern us, the things that bother us, the things that hinder us. Hallelujah. You know, the good thing about confessing is when you start confessing to God and, and you start talking out loud and you're saying, Lord, have mercy, uh, this lying tongue of mine. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Help these wandering eyes of mine. Lord, God, have mercy. Help my imagination, oh God. Uh, help, 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 help me, God, spend more time studying. Help, help, help me, God, to spend more time focusing on those things that are good, those things that are perfect, uh, those things that are kind, those things that are of you, Lord God. Help me and see in your confession what you end up finding out is that you need, some of us just need this kind of stuff to keep us close to God, to, to keep us knowing and, and, and aware that, that without God, we're not going to make it. Some of us need that. 
So, 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 so some of us are, uh, are, are just built that way. Hallelujah, somebody. And so God has called us to be an example. And so unless you confess to God uh, and then gain, regain your confidence that, that God understands everything that you're going through, uh, there's a scripture that says that, that God has been tempted and he has been tested and he has endured the, th the same thing that every human being has endured. But the reason why he is our high priest is because he is without sin. Uh, he did not give in to the enemy in the wilderness. He did not give in to the one that offered him something to drink, even on the cross. He did not give in to his heart that said, you know what? I should smite everything out here. But, but he says, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Within the confession, we are reminded, hallelujah, somebody, oh, glory to God, that, that, that God is our center. Jesus is the center of our joy. He's the center of our joy. And by that, we can be confident. Hallelujah, somebody. And when the Spirit moves us to tell our testimony, because see, after you come through that, you have passed the test. Uh, and then now you can tell it. Uh, so I declare unto you after you pass the test, uh, in the confession you will know. Uh, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt because God will forgive you. He will say to you what he said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Hallelujah, somebody. And I know you done messed up. I done messed up too. Hallelujah, somebody. But, 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 but when you go to God boldly because of the son of Jesus Christ because of his blood that covers us. Huh? Then you have the right attitude. Number one, you're making the right approach. Huh? Hallelujah, somebody, you've made the right choice. So your destiny is forgiveness. Your destiny is empowerment. Your destiny, hallelujah, somebody, is to help somebody else huh? come to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. I don't know about you, but that thing makes me happy. It makes me glad because now I can laugh in the devil's face because he thought he had me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He thought he had me. He thought he had you. But I came to tell you this morning that he's a liar and he does not have you. He know his time is running out. Hallelujah, somebody. He know that victory is yours. Victory is mine in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. So confess. Tell him all about your trouble. Have a talk with God. Huh? Just sit down one day. Huh? Uh, uh, even if you're, you're struggling with your drinking, huh? sit down one day and have a beer with God. Hallelujah, somebody. And say, Lord, this thing is bothering me. It's really working on my nerves. Help me understand, God, why I can't get out of this place that I'm in. Why I can't shake this condition. Yeah, yeah, I know I said beer. I know somebody's like, oh, Lord. What did he say? Uh, you don't remember in the Bible? Uh, Jesus told him to give that man who was a wino, give him his drink because that was his medicine. Hallelujah, somebody. See, he's saying to us that, that we can't look down our nose at folk. Hallelujah. But, 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 but for the grace of God, it is me. Hallelujah. That needs that drink every day. That, that needs that drink every morning. I can't live without it. it. It's me. But for the grace of God. Hallelujah, somebody. And I'm talking to those of you who, who is wrestling with that addictive spirit or, or that addictive DNA or that addictive characteristic that, that we wrestle with, not just in drinking, but in eating chocolate, in eating food, in going shopping, in spending money, in gambling. We wrestle with it. And the reason why we wrestle with it so much is it's bringing us down and keeping us from where God is calling us to be in spite of ourselves it's because we won't confess carry it on the inside and we go stand in front of people and pretend like we ain't got no issues. Church, the people need to hear your story. Church, people need to hear your struggle. Church, people need to hear your problems and your issues. They'll know that it's the strength of God that keeps you. So they'll know it's the spirit of God that leads you. They know it's the spirit of God that has you, that makes sure that whatever our issues are, don't overcome us. Whatever our issues are, don't have power over us. But God, but his spirit, but his word, uh, but his fellowship, uh, but his communion. Come on, somebody. This is the thing that keeps us. This is the thing that makes us who we are. New creatures uh, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. That used to be me, but hallelujah, that's not me anymore. That used to be how I think, but I, I don't think like that no more. Why? Because I confess. To God when I'm struggling. I confess to God when I'm weak. I, 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 I tell it. 
when I'm going through. Hallelujah, somebody. Not ashamed of it. Oh, good God from Zion. So, enemy, you can't trick me. You can't trap me. Hallelujah, somebody. Because I got God on my side. I, I, I have confession. He has given me confession, not just to him, but to each other. There's a partner I know. I can pick up the phone and say, hey, man, I'm struggling. Hallelujah, somebody. And the first thing he'll say to me, brother, let's pray. Hallelujah, somebody. He'll take me to my knees. He'll take me to the cross. He'll take me to the altar rail. He'll take me. To a place where I will not be condemned. Hallelujah, somebody. But I'll be forgiven. Glory to God. That word confess. You know, some people know it in the neighborhood as snitching. <laughs> it's not the same. That, 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 that word confess is like a safety latch. It's like a pressure release valve. Hallelujah, somebody. So when things get a little hectic, when you get a little tense, uh, when you become unconfident or not confident any longer or less confident than what you usually are, then this place that you need to go is called confession. Oh, yeah. Confess. One to another. He didn't stop there though. He also said, pray one for another. Mm -hmm. So you want to give your prayer partner something to pray for. You, you don't want them just praying willy nilly. You, you want to say to them, I need you to pray about my mouth. Uh, I need you to pray about my eyes. Uh, I need you to pray about my finances and, and my management of money. Uh, I need you to pray for the relationship of me and my queen. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm. Me and my queen, you, you need to pray for us. Uh, not, don't talk about us, church folk. Don't, don't talk about what you heard I was doing. Pray for the pastor. Pray for the teachers. Pray for the preachers. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the members of the body of Christ. Pray for each other. Learn how to keep a secret. Learn how to keep it to yourself. Learn how to take it to the Lord and leave it there. Hallelujah, somebody. Because we know he's able. You see, these are the things that come forth when you start confessing. When you start talking about some stuff, then, then you learn some stuff about yourself. You learn more about your relationship with God and, and how he's able to keep that covenant relationship. How he's able to say to you, I will never leave you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will never forsake you. Never. Hallelujah, somebody. He knows we're not perfect. He knows we're going to slip and slide every now and then. He, he knows we're going to be. Good God from Zion, you better start using that word confess. Use it for the upbuilding of this kingdom that we are now a part of. Talk to God. You know, he promised victory. <laughs> he promised glory. Hallelujah, somebody. He, he, he first going to glorify his son, Jesus Christ. But 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 then, guess what? Uh, we get to share in that glory. God, oh, y'all better come on, somebody. Why? Because he's going to glorify his kingdom. Hallelujah. And we are a part of his kingdom. We are in his, thy kingdom. Come, thy will be. Oh, come on, somebody. So confess. <laughs> Tell God all about it. Watch what he does. Watch how he speaks healing words. Words of, 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 of affirmation, confirmation, reaffirming that it was no mistake that he chose you. It wasn't by chance that he chose you. Hallelujah, somebody. You are his, and he is yours. He loved us. He loved us first. Even when we were lost in our sins. What else do you have to hide? Sin. He loved us while we were in our sin. Now there's no need to hide. Now that we're in a relationship, a covenant relationship with God. Through his calling and baptism. Hallelujah, somebody. Huh? <laughs> in our baptism. Hallelujah, somebody. He established a covenant relationship with us. And he promised never to leave us, nor to forsake us. Confess. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Uh, thanks be to God.
Now let us go down from this place. Now, now, now let us celebrate God's love for us through confession. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be your majesty, glory, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. And all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Go now and serve God with great joy.